to tongue or not to tongue? That is literally not the question here. Because what about this? And this? And this? And this? And this? And this? And this? Ah! I mean, what does it even mean? Hi everybody, welcome to The Flute Practice. My name is Tatiana and today we are going to find out what that means. If this is your first time here, then welcome to this space, this wonderful space that is here to inspire and motivate you on your flute learning journey. First of all, there are going to be some of you that are going to be like, is articulation even important? Like, who really cares? And I'm going to say to you, yes, it absolutely is important. And here's why. You've got to imagine that music is like a beautiful painting and the articulation is like the texture in that painting. It creates the texture. And so, yeah, you could have like a three-dimensional painting or you could have those amazing oil paintings where you have all this kind of texture being pulled out of it. It can totally change the character and the mood of a piece. Like something that is slurred and legato is going to sound totally different to something that is suddenly got a lot of tonguing or different articulations in it. So like, yes, on a very basic level, there is just that choice between tonguing and slurring. And those are really your first two most basic articulations. Do I tongue it? Or do I slur it? Now just to be very clear here, just how slurs work, basically the slur, you tongue the first note of the slur and everything else under the slur is genuinely not tongued. But there are so many other amazing articulations in your toolbox that we should and can explore. Now I'm going to kind of divide these guys up into two categories. There are going to be those that affect the attack or the beginning of the note. And then there are going to be the articulations that affect the end of the note. So they affect basically how long or short the notes are. Doesn't change the rhythm, just affects how long or short those notes are. So essentially it's how much space is going to be between notes as well because notes still have to fall on the correct beats, we can't change that. I'm going to walk us through some of these and it's going to hopefully become clearer as we go. Okay, attack. We're going to start with some of the articulations that affect the attack of the notes. Now, the really obvious one would probably be the accent. Our good old friend, the accent. Now, the idea there is it adds a bite at the beginning of the note. So we get a ta, ta. At the end of this video, I am going to be giving you guys some nice, helpful extra tips on how to use these articulations and how to play them on the flute. So stay tuned for that. Right now, I'm just going to kind of run through them and explain them. The next kind of group of articulations are technically kind of considered dynamics, I guess. I include them in articulation though because I think that they affect the attack of the note. And so for me, that's articulating the note. These guys are your sforzandos, also known as sforzatos, and your forte pianos. And then there are some other bizarre ones like the reinforzando and all of those things that I'm not even really going to cover today. Just be aware that they exist. Now the sforzando or sforzato is sometimes spelled differently. It's also got different names. There are people that claim that they are different things and that the one you play is slightly stronger than the other. To be honest with you, all of these guys are a little bit mysterious and sometimes difficult to decipher what people actually wanted when they wrote it in their music. But it helps to know that sforzando means forced. So we want to add some force and kind of a little bit of emphasis and accent to the beginning of that note. So if I was playing a sforzando, I'd say it's kind of like an accent, but maybe a little bit more weighted and a bit longer, not quite so punchy right at the beginning, a little bit more kind of into the note. You're going to have to play around with these things and also play depending on which pieces you're playing. We're going to chat a lot about context at the end of this video because it is super duper important. But these aren't always going to sound exactly the same in every single piece of music. For example, if Mozart wrote in a piece of music, it would sound very different than if Stravinsky wrote in a piece of music. I mean, Stravinsky wrote this thing. And we can be pretty sure it's not going to sound the same as Mozart. Now we also have those forte pianos, which also, I guess, kind of a dynamic, but also does affect the way we'd articulate that note. I'd say they're kind of like sforzandos, but more gentle. So it's just really about having a forte loud beginning of the note and then going soft and quiet almost straight away. By the way, interesting, all of these guys, which is probably why they are referred to as dynamics, sforzando, all of them, they are actually derived 
from the dynamic forte or piano or whatever it might be. So it is kind of more of a dynamic within a note rather than I guess a dynamic over several notes. So we're going to jump straight into articulations that affect the length of the note and the most obvious one here, ta-da, is obviously the staccato, our good old friend. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, basically just shortens those notes. So we've got that's all it is. We also could have though a staccatissimo. Whenever we add an issimo at the end of anything it usually means more of it and in this case it certainly does. We have even shorter crisper notes. So we have I'd say probably just a bit shorter, often a little bit drier. Like this composer really wants you to play these notes short. And then we move on to our problem child, the tenuto marking. Now technically speaking, tenuto means held or sustained. But what does that even mean? Held or sustained? Does it mean longer? Does it mean more emphasized? And in fact, this very question is something that musicians ask themselves all the time. And we have to use a little bit of interpretation when we have these articulation markings. So for example, if I'm playing a really slow kind of legato piece of music and I see those little lines over the notes, it's probably going to mean to play them with a bit more emphasis and even maybe a little bit more detached. But if I see those tenuto markings in a like fast, quite short and punchy piece of music, it's probably going to need to play those notes a little bit longer. So it is a little bit confusing and that comes down to the fact that really the kind of definition held or sustained is probably a little bit vague in itself. The interesting thing about tenuto is that it kind of crosses both of those categories. On the one hand, it obviously affects the length of the note, but it also kind of affects the beginning and the attack of the note because often those tenutos will get a little bit more weight in them where they're kind of a little bit more weighted and emphasized. If I were to play tenutos, and this is difficult to do just on its own because there's so much interpretation, but I'd probably do it something like this. Kind of a sense of sustaining and holding those notes without being totally legato. The Mercato is another one of those articulations that kind of sits between these two groups. Because on the one hand it is accented, Mercato literally means marked, and on the other hand it is usually a little bit shortened, so we're creating kind of a sense of emphasis and demarcation of that note, and so it kind of falls into both of those categories. If I was playing a Mercato, I would probably play it similar to the tenutos in a way, excepting maybe a little bit shorter and a little bit more emphasis and bite at the beginning. And now, just in case you thought, oh, this articulation business is simple and easy, just wait for it. Because some crazy decided that this was a great idea. I mean, what does that even mean? I can't imagine two markings that mean more of the opposite thing being combined with each other. We have tenuto, which means held and sustained, whatever that means. Then we have a staccato, which means short, and then we have a slow, which means technically long as well. What? I don't know, sometimes with some of these articulations I feel like composers just got bored and they just started making stuff up. They were like, oh, let me take two things that everybody knows and I'll make something nobody knows and nobody knows how to play, but okay. Let's demystify these guys a little bit and just kind of walk you through them. Our first one, relatively simple. I mean, you know, just total opposites in one articulation. We have staccatos, which means short, and we have slow, which means long. But here it helps to understand that slurs are not just about not tonguing. They are often more about phrasing and helping us to find direction in the notes. And so when you see this kind of thing, what it's telling you is to create separation between the notes but still have them moving in one direction. And you definitely would not play them super duper staccato and short, you would play them a little bit longer but with space between. So you'd get this. So hopefully you get a sense of them being kind of connected and going on the same musical line. We have the same thing with the tenuto markings in the slur, equally confusing. But it's the same idea, they belong in one musical line and we kind of create a little bit of length. I think string players can do this so well because they basically have a system where generally if something is slurred they will bow it in one bow and if it's separate or how we would tongue things they would use separate bows. 
And so in markings like this, what they do is they still play it in one bow, but they stop the bow in between. So they'll have ta, ta, ta. And I think if we can kind of copy that a little bit and kind of get a sense of that, we get an idea of what to do here. So for the tenuto markings, I would do similar to the staccato, just a little bit more emphasized and maybe a little bit more sustained. But wait, there's more. The chaos does not quite end there. Because now we start adding things like tenuto and staccato, because I don't know, that seemed like a good idea. And my best kind of bet for what that actually means is just a note which is quite kind of stressed and articulated and a little bit shorter. We have all kinds of these combinations, accent with tenuto, marcato with tenuto, and then just in case you wanted to really get insane, we just threw them all together and just, I don't know, hope for the best. Okay, and I am gonna just interrupt this slightly because here's the thing about articulation. It really comes down to context. Context is so incredibly important. If I'm playing a slow movement, Usually the tonguing, even if it's his staccato or there are accents in it, it's usually going to be softer and more gentle. It's going to fit the context of the music. Like it is no good having this kind of massive accent in the middle of like the slow, calm piece of music. That would be crazy. Like Mozart did write that, and that is, no, that's weird. So that's the one side of it. Depending on the character of the music, it's going to change how we interpret that articulation. But there is another side, and that is also the style period, when a piece of music was written and who it was written by. Because some composers, especially earlier composers, people like Bach and Vivaldi and so on, they would have written certain articulations that maybe were not quite understood the way that we understand them today. A famous example of this is often the staccatos that were written in music that actually told the performer to articulate, to tongue the notes, because in that time, you had a lot more freedom about which notes you wanted to slur and which notes you wanted to tongue. So this was the composer saying, please tongue these notes. A lot of the more modern music, composers like our friend Stravinsky or Bartok Shostakovich, their accents were usually a bit heavier, a little bit more kind of bite and demarcation. So it really is going to depend who is your composer and when did he write this music. Now the other thing that's really important about articulation is to not just do everything with your tongue and kind of think that you can just kind of create all articulation with your tongue. We often think this, we think kind of the tongue is the beginning and the end of articulation, but the truth is my friends, that the beginning and the end of your articulation should be your support. Always use your best supported sound when articulating. This means that when we're doing things like those accents, the sforzandos, even the forte pianos, we don't just want to be doing t t t with the tongue. We also want to be thinking a bit of weight and breath accent. So we want to be thinking of those ha ha and those has that go out, not in. So practically this means if I did an accent with just my tongue, it would sound like this. Usually quite direct and quite harsh. And we want to add more of a ha ha ha. Hopefully you kind of hear it gets a lot more depth and body and a bit more ta, a bit more bite. The other thing is if you are doing staccato notes, you never, ever, ever want to just think ta, ta, ta and kind of stop the air and break it off. You always want to be think of kind of little bouncing staccatos, ha, 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 so that we are always bouncing those little staccato notes and not just chopping them. Instead of Practically, this means we actually sometimes think a little bit longer with our staccatos, ta, 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 especially because the flute is pretty quiet already, like we want to be heard, and if you are going to be like ta, 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 and you're going to play like that, it's going to sound horrible and you're not going to be heard. The other really nice thing to play with is the position of the tongue in the mouth. If you're more forward, you get more of a sharper tu, 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 tu. If you think a little bit further back, you get a softer do, 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 do. 
And you can also play with the force of the tongue. So how strong is that tongue? And really play and practice this, guys. I'm serious. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, you may want to go and check out that you're not making any of these articulation mistakes. I want to invite you guys to go check out my Patreon space. We are doing a little masterclass on that Mozart and Dante Grazioso to deepen this work that we have done in this video today. We're really going to see it in practice. Happy practicing and see you next time.